This is ABC 7 News at 7. Your Suncoast News. We're here for you. Well, we really want the best for our children. Uh, we love them. We want to see them actively engaged in learning, having fun, and just looking forward to coming to school. It's not just the parents of students who want to see their children succeed in school, it's the teachers as well. Some teachers want to make sure their students learn as much as possible, so they are going out and spending their own money on school supplies. Good evening, everyone. I'm Alan Cohn, and welcome to ABC 7 at 7. We'll have more on teachers spending their own money to help out students later. But first, our top seven stories at 7. And we begin tonight with the aftermath from the violence in Charlottesville, the calls to remove Confederate monuments everywhere, including here. A Confederate monument right outside the doorstep of the Manatee County Courthouse, Anthony Pusateri has been on a mission for the past month. His goal is to replace the Confederate monument with a statue of Snooty the Manatee. He started a petition which has garnered more than 13,000 signatures so far. He understands the history, but says the statue has to go. At its very core, said that black people are not equal to white people, that slavery is a good thing, and I'm not okay with that. A Manatee County Commissioner recently suggested replacing the monument with one honoring law enforcement officers. Here's a stat sh that shouldn't make the citizens of S the Sunshine State real proud. Florida ranks second among the number of active hate groups in the nation. According to the Southern Poverty Law Center, there are more than 60 active hate groups in Florida, a map detailing more than 900 hate groups actively operating across the nation. Some of the groups located on the Sun Coast are the Straightway and more an anti-Muslim group in Venice and the American Freedom Party, a white nationalist organization in Lakewood Ranch. California ranks first in the nation with 79 active hate groups. Funeral plans are set for Venice's longtime Chamber of Commerce president who passed away over the weekend. John Ryan's sudden death has sent shockwaves throughout the business community. For 20 years, Ryan led Venice's Chamber of Commerce. He helped implement programs to help up-and-coming entrepreneurs and business owners find their way. We joke around that he's, uh, he's watching us right now with a beer in his hand and he's like, keep going. Like, don't stop what all the progress that we've made. Ryan's funeral is this Saturday at St. Mark's Episcopal Church. Florida's taxpayers are spending millions of dollars to protect Governor Rick Scott and visit, visiting dignitaries. A new report shows the state spent more than $3.2 million on security expenses since last July. Most of that goes to providing protection for Governor Rick Scott and his First Lady Ann Scott. The salaries and travel expenses for agents add up. The rest goes to security for visiting politicians. Be on alert when you're outside with your pet. A rabies case has been reported in Charlotte County. According to the Florida Department of Health, an infected bat was found in someone's yard and two people were exposed. Rabies is spread when an animal is sick, sick with rabies, transmits it through saliva. Anyone who has been scratched or bitten by an unknown animal should report the incident to animal control. A new school year and one big problem getting to class. There are concerns about a school bus driver shortage affecting cities across the country. Here on the Sun Coast, the Manatee County School District still needs 10 to 15 more drivers. In Sarasota County, the district has multiple positions listed on its website for bus driver positions. Manatee School District is issuing a safety advisory for the partial solar eclipse next Monday. All outdoor activities between 1 p.m. and 4.30 p.m. will be moved indoors. Outdoor activities may resume after 4.30 p.m. Principals and staff will hold a bus and car riders indoors until their buses or cars arrive. Viewing of the eclipse will be limited to virtual viewing in safe indoor settings. Parents are being asked to speak to their children in advance about the dangers of looking directly at the sun and potential harm it can cause to their uh, eyes. And I, Bob, we're all excited about this, but you have to take those precautions. You absolutely do, and it's coming up pretty quickly, too, Monday. And looks like uh, we'll have some showers and storms back in the forecast. But if it's anything like today, we had a lot of clear skies throughout the afternoon. And still at this hour, looking pretty good. Well, this is looking off toward the east now. There are some clouds and showers inland. But not much going on near the coast. Lots of sunshine, 89 degrees, the new point 73, or a heat index, a, a cooler 97. And the forecast calls for warm temperatures right through 11 o'clock. 
82 degrees last night at 11 o'clock. The heat index was at 93 degrees here. There's no uh, threat of any significant rainfall on the coast, and that means we're not going to see that cooling effect that these showers normally bring. Uh, there are some storms uh, near Port Charlotte and Northport, a little bit of activity, but every time they start to develop, they start tapping into that drier air above them and then shuts them down for the most part. May generate a little lightning strike there just to the east of Northport, but not much. That dry air I mentioned, you can see it covering the peninsula and stretching all the way down into the Bahamas. But notice in the western part of Cuba, we're starting to see a return of moisture there. We're going to have uh, that moisture move back into play, it looks like, beginning on Thursday. So showers and storms will be back for your lawns out there. 89 degrees in Miami, the same in Sarasota, one degree cooler in Tallahassee now. And temperatures around the area into the low 90s in Sebring and Lake Placid, Arcadia, Northport. Here at 92, Braden and checking in at 89. The Gulf water temperature actually warmer than anywhere, 93 degrees at this time. Uh, the tropics are getting very active right now. We're watching three separate areas in the Atlantic. Uh, the one is on the far right of your screen. You can't see it hasn't come into play yet, but uh, the two that we are going to kind of keep an eye on are these right here. This is one, and this is disturbance one. Disturbance two looks healthier. Sometimes I've seen over the uh, years is that this is kind of a lead blocker and cleans the air out in terms of dry air. And the second one following typically has a better chance of developing. So we'll watch that. Girt now is a hurricane category one, 80 mile an hour winds. It's moving to the northeast and is uh, having no impact in terms of wind or rain for the coast of the mid-Atlantic coast. But it is causing some problems with some high surf all up and down the mid-Atlantic coast states. Even Florida getting a little bit of that high surf uh, right now along the east coast, but not here. Things are calm and, as I said, should stay that way right through the night and tomorrow. Things changing, though, by Thursday. You would be good on a Telestrator. Great for Monday Night Football. Yeah, I'd like to be that. That'd be great. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Bob. Right. And still to come, buying school supplies is a necessity for your kids to su succeed in school. But many teachers are being forced to buy those supplies with their own money. Stay with us. What's up? I want to point out three tips for using the home computer more safely. Point away. First, stop. Make sure your software is up to date and that you've password protected your computer's login and Wi-Fi connection. Next, think before visiting a site, opening attachments, or clicking on links. Then connect, knowing you're helping make the web safer for you. And for everyone. Make Stop, Think, Connect part of your daily online routine. Whee! Attention, Americans eligible for Medicare. Are you getting all the benefits you're entitled to? Did you know there may be money available to lower your medical prescription costs? Call Health Markets and we'll tell you if you qualify. Hi, I'm Dr. Martin Jitsi. It's a new Medicare year. That means more changes and more confusion. The key question is, what can you do now to ensure you get the care you need in the coming year? Call Health Markets today. You may qualify to save money on prescriptions. We'll help you find plans that may cost less, cover more, and could even lower your prescription costs to increase your savings. We help you find all the benefits you're entitled to, and we do it at no cost. Make sure you have what you need to get the care that's right for you. Find out if you qualify to receive extra help with your prescriptions. Call the number on the screen now. Representatives are standing by. So, how many of us feel completely confident about our financial future? Let's hear some specifics. Yes, go ahead. I don't want to be a burden to my kids. When my husband died, it took almost all of our savings to give him a proper funeral. I honestly don't know if there's enough to bury me, let alone cover expenses should something happen. Okay. Let's talk solutions. One thing you may want to get in place is a guaranteed whole life insurance policy from United of Omaha Life Insurance Company, which is a mutual of Omaha company. This is affordable coverage, which provides a cash payment, which can cover funeral expenses, bills, and other financial needs, all from a company that's been doing the right thing for its policyholders for over 90 years. Yes, sir. Do I need medical exams, you know, things like that? No medical exams. If you're between the ages of 45 and 85, you can call this number or you can go online and apply for coverage up to $25,000. United of Omaha Guaranteed Whole Life Insurance. Call or go online now. ABC 7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you weeknights at 5. 
For many working families on the Sun Coast, buying back to school supplies stretches the family budget. Now consider this. Many teachers wind up buying school supplies not only for their kids, but for yours. Kate Flexter has more. It's back to school in Sarasota and Manatee counties, and that means new clothes, backpacks, and notebooks for students. But chances are your teacher is spending more on school supplies than you are. That's the case for Garden Elementary School teacher Stacy Belanca. Fellow teachers and myself spend about $500 um, of our own money um, to help support our students. And it turns out that's a national trend. The Education Market Association says the vast majority of teachers end up paying an average of $500 out of pocket, and one in 10 spend $1,000 or more. Plus, a survey conducted last summer by the National School Supply and Equipment Association found that teachers pay for 77% of the school supplies needed in their classrooms. It's a trend parents find concerning. Teachers spend not just their time, but their money. I feel really bad that it's gotten to the point where teachers are spending their own money because we all know teachers are not getting paid enough. It's a problem only magnified as cash-strapped districts dole out less and less funding per student. A report by the Center for Budget and Policy Priorities found that most states provide less support per student than before the Great Recession. In Sarasota County, teachers do get $100 per year from the district and another $100 from the parent teacher student organization, not to mention donations from community groups. Without all of these sources, you know, it's, it, it would be difficult to really fully be able to provide all the things that children need today in our 21st century classrooms. Counselor at Garden Elementary School Gabrielle O'Berry says teachers feel they don't really have a choice and find it hard to do the job without the proper supplies. It takes money out of the teacher's pocket and they do it because they love the children and they want whatever they can do to make sure those children get the education that they deserve. Belanca says that's exactly what it comes down to. We really want the best for our children. Uh, we love them. We want to see them actively engaged in learning, having fun, and just looking forward to coming to school. All the cost of a good education. Kate Flexter, ABC7, your Suncoast News. Coming up, a member of the Sarasota County School Board and the president of Sarasota's Teacher Association. The school bell has rung, and it is time for the trapezoid. Call to see if you qualify to enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan right now. At Humana, we believe great things are ahead of you when you start with healthy. And part of staying healthy means choosing the right Medicare plan. Humana can help. With original Medicare, you're covered for hospital stays and doctor office visits when you're sick, but keep in mind you'll have to pay a deductible for each. A Medicare supplement plan can cover your deductibles and coinsurance, but you may pay higher premiums than you do with other plans, and prescription drug coverage isn't included. But with an all-in-one Humana Medicare Advantage plan, you could get all that coverage plus Part D prescription drug benefits, all for an affordable monthly plan premium and in some areas, no plan premium. It's all described in this free book in DVD. Call for yours and discover how an all-in-one Medicare Advantage plan from Humana could save you money. Call 1-800-558-8779. Glasses and contacts, you need them to see, but they put such a strain on your life, you miss precious moments. Due to new advances in vision improvement technology, LASIK is now affordable for almost everyone. With procedures starting as low as $299 per eye and over 1 million procedures performed by our trusted independent surgeons, LASIK surgery is a sensible, safe, and affordable solution to improve your vision. Our simple three-step process begins with a free evaluation, followed by an extensive pre-operative exam to determine if you're a candidate for LASIK eye surgery. Depending on the results of your evaluation and eye exam, you and your surgeon will choose the LASIK option that works best for you. So call now to talk to a LASIK Vision Institute counselor and schedule your free evaluation. That's a $100 value, free. Call the LASIK Vision Institute for your free evaluation and enjoy more of your life. Call 1-800-813-0109. 1-800-813-0109. Tomorrow at 4 on Suncoast View. 
The kids are back to school, so we need to get back to the gym. I'm Stephanie Roberts on Suncoast View. Our fitness expert, Kelly Jaco, shows us equipment that can enhance our exercise and help us get the most out of our sweat. We'll sit down with NBA player Maurice Spites about his Suncoast connection and his next big step in his career. Plus, we taste test the best of Siesta Key rum and the best bacon dishes. Tomorrow at 4 on Suncoast View. Welcome back. Can someone explain to me why teachers who don't exactly earn big bucks have to buy, in a lot of cases, school supplies for their classrooms? According to a survey by AdoptAClassroom.com, 91% of all teachers buy basic supplies for students from families that can't afford it. A billion dollars of supplies a year across the nation. The average teacher spending $600 of their own money. And joining us for more is Sarasota School Board member Shirley Brown and Pat Gardner, the president of the Sarasota Teachers Association. Thank you both for joining us. And I got to ask why. Uh, Shirley, you know, in, 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 it might happen less than in other places in, in Sarasota, but still, um, there are, are teachers here who are spending their own money. And I know that the, the, the school board provides resources like you're about to explain to us, um, but it, it doesn't go far enough. Well, this, this isn't provided by the school district. Um, Staples uh, of helps parents so that they don't have to go out and buy all the things and find all the sales. You can get $50 per child, and the teachers can say this is what they need. And I'm talking about the teachers need disinfectant wipes, the crayons, a kindergarten teacher, uh, the glue sticks, the highlighters, this, you know, uh, tissues. They need these in their classrooms. And, and if parents were to go out and buy all these things, you know, they can't catch all the sales and everything. Because you, know, you can buy crayons on sale for 25 cents, but if you walk into a store, you might be paying $1.37 or $1.97. So they said buy the crayons at the beginning of the year when they're cheaper. But if you've got four kids or three kids, you, you, to take that $50 times three kids, uh, you don't have that in your budget. Um, and then you've got to buy the uniforms or the school clothes and the shoes. It's rough. It's difficult for parents to be able to fill this hole, too. Right. And as we saw in, in Kate's story, I, I, and correct me with, with the numbers, the, the, school, uh, the school department gives teachers $100 and the PTO another $100? No. The, the, there's $100 that the teachers can use for uh, getting things from the uh, main warehouse, you know, and they'll use those dollars sometimes for crayons, but for, for the large co construction papers and things like that. If you are at a school that has a PTO that raises money, they might give money to each of the teachers. When you're at a school, and, uh, and our Title I schools, and I can't imagine any of the Title I schools having enough money in their PTO to give any money to the teachers at all. So it's a double whammy for the teachers at those schools because those parents can't afford this and they don't get the money from the PTO. Pat, I, I, I don't know if the Teachers Association keeps st statistics on this, but anecdotally, uh, Elise, can you tell us about how many teachers in Sarasota wind up well, losing I sent, their own money? I sent something out just to my reps yesterday when you called, and I must have had 60 emails saying what they got. And s most of them I, I remember when I taught and, and I bought too, but it's surprising how many shoes, clothes, and food, 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 food came up all the time. So you had your regular... Hand sanitizer was number one on the list, of course, and then pencils and papers and all of those things. But how many, I had, uh, most teachers have a book corner in the lower grades. They had to buy all the books, they have to buy the furniture, they have to buy the rug for the book corner. Uh, my, my middle school teachers have new hanging computers and the kids sit around it. Well, there's no storage, so they're buying storage furniture, storage cabinets, they're buying that sort of thing. And, they're, and, and most of them were saying 300, 400, 500 they've already spent so far. One teacher said, I don't want my husband to know how much money <laughs> well, he spent. Well, now he does. Yeah. Uh, and, and what is the average teacher salary in Sarasota? Uh, we, and we don't know the average anymore because of all the changes that they've done. Uh, the state doesn't have it all out right. this year. We are yet. just getting started with this conversation. We're getting warmed up. We'll have more right after we check first alert weather, so stay with us. When you want to get away from it all, to a place where you can do everything or nothing at all. Surrounded by natural beauty, 
and all the modern amenities you might desire, then you'll want to be here at the Wannabe Inn on the beautiful shores of Minnesota Key, Florida. To plan your escape, log on to wannabein.com. I'm calling in regards about my mother, and I'm here, and I just want to thank you because it saved my mother's life yesterday. Um, and I'd like to know the names of the people that came in and saved her so I could call and thank them, and she's doing fine. It's a wonderful thing. Thank you. When you fall and cannot get up, an accident can turn into a tragedy. But with Life Alert, one touch of a button can get you help fast. Life Alert saves a person from a catastrophe every 10 minutes. Life Alert is a lifesaver. If it weren't for Life Alert, I wouldn't be sitting here today. For a free Life Alert brochure, call 1-800-652-3012. That's 1-800-652-3012. Call now, 1-800-652-3012. For a free brochure, call 1-800-652-3012. No theater lover's bucket list is complete without the classic black comedy Arsenic and Old Lace. Two adorable old ladies who just happen to poison their tenants and bury them in their basement. Fun and farcical, this hilarious play is heating up the summer at the Player Center from August 9th through the 20th. Call 365-2494 or visit us at theplayers.org. You'll die laughing when you see Arsenic and Old Lace. We're losing exotic animals on a daily basis, and the ones that we have in captivity are really the ambassadors for their wild counterparts. I'm Clayton Rosaire from the Big Cat Habitat and Gulf Coast Sanctuary, housing over 150 exotic animals that needed a great home. And if you love animals, please help them. Do it locally. Support your local no-kill shelters, your local wild animal sanctuaries. Make a difference where you can. Our conversation about teachers buying school supplies continues right after we get a check on the forecast with First Alert Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. <laughs> Thanks. Right now we're looking at Anna Maria webcam time lapse showing calm conditions out there at Bimini Bay and Anna Maria. Uh, looking at a lot of clear skies too as a result of dry air and high pressure, which means uh, we're going to look at fair skies tonight too. Different story with the uh, hurricane, the second one of the season out here in the Atlantic. Good news. It's moving uh, actually west of uh, Bermuda and it looks like east of the United States going to go right in between the two and then head off into the open waters of the Atlantic as a result of a trough coming off the mid-Atlantic coast states. It is generating some high surf though along the coast with some dangerous rip currents along the east coast of the United States. For us, just a few isolated cells popping up here and there, a little bit more along the east and into central portions of our viewing area tonight. That activity is going to be increasing over the upcoming 48 hours, more so on Thursday. But we'll notice a little bit more activity tomorrow. And then, uh, as I mentioned, Thursday, things will be back on as, as far as storms go. This one generating some lightning now, but it'll only be around for about 10, 15 more minutes. And then it will rain itself out as a result of the dry air in place and the upper levels of the atmosphere. Currently, at the airport, it's 89, the dew point 73, the pressure rising ever so slightly now at 30 inches even. The high today was above average at 92 degrees, our normal high at 90 and the record high, 97 degrees. No rainfall. We're deficit, our deficit now for the month is nearing three inches, and for the year, over three and a half inches. It only takes one storm really to make that up uh, for these afternoon showers and storms to come around. They won't be back so much tomorrow, but they will so on Thursday. A better chance for showers and storms. The rain chances tomorrow only at 30%, typically this time of year right around 50%. And uh, this is the color-enhanced satellite imagery of uh, GERT, and this is a trough of low pressure that is going to force us off to the northeast and keep it away from the U.S. coast. And as far as the winds go on it, 80 mile an hour winds, and it's moving to the north northeast at 12 now. Uh, the influence of that trough is already starting to push it and bend it away from the United States. Well, we have three separate systems in the Atlantic that we are monitoring. Uh, this one in particular is uh, not really that well organized. It's expected to go more on a westerly course. This one's looking better and better organized now and has a 40% chance developing. The forecast models for disturbance number one basically carry it off to the west, and that would be a good thing as a result of the higher winds in here. We don't expect much from it, but we'll see how it plays out. The second one is a little bit more concerning. Uh, it has a little bit more chance for developing in the next day or two as it moves off toward the 
west northwest in time. The forecast path and track for it pretty widespread in five days from now. So we'll keep an eye on that as it makes its way through the open waters of the Atlantic and having no impact on any land area anytime soon. For us, not much of an impact at all as far as rainfall goes. We're going to stay quiet overnight. There's a chance for a few coastal showers in the morning. You'll notice a little bit more action showing up on this particular forecast model tomorrow afternoon and even more so on Thursday. So Thursday we'll get a better chance for showers and storms making their way toward the coast. Uh, for boaters tomorrow, a light chop out there. Not much going on. Seas running two feet or less. Sunset will be at 808 and sunrise at 702. Warm and muggy overnight, 80 degrees for a low. And then tomorrow, scattered showers and a few thunderstorms about, not much, mostly sunny otherwise. The extended forecast, here it comes. The summer returns with those afternoon showers and storms all the way through the weekend and beyond. Alan will be back with his panel right after this. Stick around. Are you currently on Medicare? In other words, do you carry the red, white, and blue Medicare card? If so, are you suffering from chronic back pain? If you answered yes, you may be eligible for a pain-relieving back brace covered by Medicare at little to no cost, shipped directly to your home for free. These medical-grade back braces are ideal for lower back pain, arthritis, spinal disorders, and other chronic back problems. Will you qualify for a medical-grade back brace? Call Back Brace America at 1-800-683-9262. Consumer Cellular makes it easy to stay in touch with family and stay within our budget. Now our cell phone bill is only a fraction of what it used to be. Our average customers get everything they need for about $25 a month, and plans start at only $10 a month with no contracts. Consumer Cellular has a great choice of phones. Check out my new one. I picked this simple phone. I use my son's old smartphone. Kept my number, too. Consumer Cellular has been an approved AARP provider since 2008, and members get exclusive discounts. It's a good thing Consumer Cellular is always there, because sometimes I need a little help. Sometimes. We're proud to have received the J.D. Power Award for highest customer service among non-contract wireless providers. Over the years, we've seen a lot of change. We actually use change. Luckily, there are some things we can still afford. Like, like Consumer Cellular. Cellular. Stop paying too much for wireless service. Switch now, and for a limited time, get a 20 dollar credit on any new line of service. Call 1-800-920-3084. Go online or visit a Target store today. You studied hard, went to college, and achieved your dream, but it turned into a financial nightmare. If you have federal student loans and you'd like to reduce your payments, get more time, or have your loans completely eliminated, then we have good news. With one call to Student Loan Relief Services, you can find support and guidance. We've already helped thousands of people, and we can help you too. If you have $10,000 or more in federal student loans, you can qualify for payment extensions, payment reductions, or you may qualify to have your federal student loan completely forgiven. Call Student Loan Relief Services now to find out about your options. Take control of your finances and get out from under this burden. One of our student loan experts has the answers to your questions and great solutions to ease your financial burden. We're here for you. Call Student Loan Relief Services now. Call 800-759-0203. 800-759-0203. Welcome back. We live in one of the most affluent communities in the nation, yet an incredible number of public school teachers wind up paying for school supplies for their classroom out of their own wallets. Joining us for more is Sarasota School Board Member Shirley Brown and Pat Gardner, President of the Sarasota Teachers Association. Pat, you have a long list there. You only got through part of it. Well, um, I mean, you have your normal hand sanitizer, school supplies, printer, ink, laminator, that sort of, th sort of thing. but. We have a lot of furniture, books to use at home, shoes, clothes, soup, uh, soup, soap, toothpaste, those sort of things. Uh, one teacher paid for a child to go to the doctor, musical instruments and in music class, science supplies because they might get a book but they don't get anything to do experiments with, um, anything to do with decorating, um, trophies, awards. One teacher paid lunch money for, and, and some teachers told me when we get new teachers and they only make $44,000 a year, sometimes we have to help them because they're right out of college and they don't have any money. And you asked us why do they do that? Because that becomes their family and they care. And, and when you get a child who has nothing, who might have slept in his car, might not have eaten that morning or maybe the night before, that becomes your child and you take care of them. And that's what you do. Surely the, the school board is aware of this. Why isn't it able to do anything about it? 
Well, you know, you talked about living in an affluent community, and we do. Uh, but a lot of that affluence is with the retired community. 53% uh, of the children that attend school are from homes that uh, have low incomes and, and are entitled to free or reduced lunches. So we, we've got more than one community. We, we've got a community, a lot of organizations come forward to help us. Um, and you know, the, the PTAs will help at the schools. I'm, I'm really concerned about those Title I schools and helping them more. Right. But, I, you know, I get that there are a lot of families who simply can't afford school supplies, the clothing, the food. But why is, it, why is the onus on the teachers to fill in the gaps? Well, that's a good question. I mean, I, I guess you might ask, why do we get 16 new assistant principals and they go without school supplies? I mean, it, it's because that's the way it's done. And it's that... that thing where we don't see that invisible problem over there. But teachers see it. It's not invisible to them because little Johnny comes in in the same clothes every day and he doesn't have any backpack. Well, I mean, this is not necessarily a new story. And it's actually you know, happening uh, all across the country. Um, oh, why, why does it become the parents or the teachers that have to buy the disinfecting wipes? Um, but even in high schools, I think people forget because several years ago when things were bad in 8 and 9, we did food drives all the time, basically for the high schools, because that's where the kids won't say, I'm a, I don't have any food. They're embarrassed. So that we had teachers setting up pantries all over the high schools. Well, the next year, people forget, I really helped. I really helped that pantry. But then I got other things to do, and they forget. When you're getting, when you have a lot of money and your kids are doing OK, you forget about that kid over there. What is the conversation uh, between the Teachers Association and the school board on this issue? Well, there are organizations out there. I, I know our, our several churches worked in, in, for the Day of Hope to reach out to families that are on the free and reduced lunch, and they, they apply, and then they can go to the, to the who, whatever is distributing them, and they'll get a backpack. They will get um, certain school supplies, but, of course, they don't necessarily know what that teacher at that school wants because they're going to different, these kids are going to different schools. So they'll give them some supplies, but I think they've also upped the ante now so that they'll give them like a, a $50 gift certificate to like Walmart or something uh, to go and buy more supplies. So there are community organizations that are working, and then there's other businesses too that are having drive for school supplies. Right, but obviously it, it's not covering everything. And I'm, what I guess I'm, I'm trying to ask is, and I don't know if this is a legal question or not, is who is legally responsible for making sure that every kid in the public school has the supplies that they need, the food to the eat, and the, even the clothing to, to wear when the parent is unable to supply all that? I don't think anybody's legally responsible. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's legally responsible. And the majority of, of the parents want to provide, majority of the parents want to provide the, the, the shoes, the clothes, and the supplies for the kids. And, and, and I mean, I remember that was always fun going out and buying those supplies. Um, I don't think we want to take that away from the, the families to be able to do that. What we need to do is, is offer the assistance to those teachers. But, but it's other things that teachers have in their classrooms, like you said, you know, the, the carpet for the reading centers, you know, uh, and I, I'm storage more, units. Yeah, yeah, and I'm, I'm looking at more Books. at elementary schools, Books. you know, and some of the, the, the reading, the stories and that they get. Um, you know, I'd like to see that we do something more, you know, at the end of the year when teachers are moving out or retiring, that some of those things that we could recycle those things more too. Right. Because that seems that that is an issue of almost, I dare say, a capital expense. That's, that, you know, that is furniture for the classroom. I mean, I would assume would be the, the school department's uh, responsibility. We, we try to provide those things and oftentimes what happens is um, things are recycled amongst the different teachers in the classrooms. But if a teacher wants a certain thing in their classroom, and there isn't one available, I, they'll I, buy them. And I, I bought carpets for my granddaughter, you know, my I, daughter's room. I, I'm sure we all remember that, that car, cartoon or picture with the caption that I will paraphrase that it will be a great day when uh, the, the, the Air Force has to hold a bake sale to buy a, a bomber, but the, our schools get all the supplies that they, they need. W I think anybody could understand what the, the school district 
here and everywhere went through during the economic downturn, but now that it has recovered, why is this a still problem? Uh, <laughs> you can say that it's recovered, but we have not increased uh, the base student allocation from what it was in 2006 if you add the cost of inflation to what we are getting per student now. And, and uh, you know, they've rolled back the, um, <laughs> it gets, gets kind of complicated, but they've rolled back the millage rate basically reduced property taxes for schools across the state of Florida. $500 million for this school year, $500 million for last school year, so that, you know, homeowners and businesses will have to pay less on their taxes for school. So we haven't all recovered. Um, and yes, we did get some more money for schools, but a lot of that went to, you know, new teachers for the new students. But um, So in other words, they're not funding us any better than they did 10 years ago. Yeah, we're, we're, we, we haven't recovered. The school districts haven't recovered to the same extent. We, we haven't kept up with inflation. And we were behind then. We're still one of the, the poorest funding uh, states for funding our schools. We're down there in the bottom 10. And, and that is a responsibility, a responsibility primarily of the state legislature. Yes, but not a priority. They'll tell you it is, but it's not. We had a lot of debate about the new school law that went into effect, the money that's going to charter schools. But what kind of conversations have you had with our local legislative delegation about changing the equation here, which is leading to this situation? Uh, we had our uh, meeting with our uh, lobbyist today coming up with our legislative plan. And um, understanding where they're at now, um, I mean, they, we have legislators that um, they, used, they didn't call us public schools. They called us government schools versus, you know, those, the charter schools are run by other people, and then, uh, you know, then they've got the, the private schools that they get the vouchers, but they called public schools government schools. Well, now they're calling them failing factories. And I'm like, what is that? I mean, they have no respect, some of them have no respect for public schools. Um, hopefully, we can reach out to our delegation and let them understand, uh, point out, how some of the things that they can do that will help all of our schools. Has our local delegation been receptive in the past? Our local delegation doesn't sit on the education committees or the appropriation committee. Uh, Nancy Dieter was, was, a, was a wonderful advocate for public schools and stood up there and fought for us, understood the issues. Um, but our delegation right now, they don't sit on the education well, committees. They weren't behind in the back room when they made the law. They had two days to read it and vote on it. That's true. So they don't really have any say anyway. And it was, you vote for this or you're, or or, you, or you're you in the basement. Or you won't pass, yes. It, it, it wasn't our delegation that made those decisions. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we have to take a quick break, and when we return, we'll have final thoughts. I'm calling in regards about my mother, and I'm here, and I just want to thank you because it saved my mother's life yesterday. And I'd like to know the names of the people that came in and saved her. It's a wonderful thing. Thank you. With Life Alert, one touch of a button can get you help fast. For a free Life Alert brochure, call 1-800-990-3613. That's 1-800-990-3613. Call now, 1-800-990-3613. 40 million. That's the number of free phones still available and the number of how many Americans can still get prescriptions free. Free could be wonderful. That's why I'm still working at 77 years old to pay off my prescriptions. I needed to have a, a prescription filled and I had to leave because I couldn't afford it. Call now and see what's available for you. Free prescriptions. Over 10 million people get prescriptions free and the program has expanded so another 40 million can. Free dental. Over 15,000 dentists have provided over three hundred and thirty million dollars in free dental work free cell phones 40 million free cell phones are still available with free minutes and more free cell phone would change my life right now because it is something I cannot afford to get medical supplies like back braces knee braces and diabetic supplies may be covered too. the free RX plus hotline has saved callers over 12 million dollars on their prescription costs these free programs are now available to 40 million more people call now join the fun at the weddings of Sarasota 17th annual wedding show at the iconic Sarasota Municipal Auditorium on US 41. Sunday, August 27th from noon to 4. Enjoy food, fun, and entertainment with a runway show on stage at 3 p.m. 
$2,000 in Weddings of Sarasota dollars given out after the runway show. You must be present to win. Pre-register at WeddingsofSarasota.com. Brides and grooms are free if registered by midnight on August 25th. Weddings of Sarasota. Register today. Enjoy some of the best Suncoast restaurants on me. Just go to mysuncoast.com slash dining, sign up for the newsletter if you haven't already, and you can win a $50 gift card to a restaurant in our area. We'll pick a winner each week, so go on our website and sign up now. Teachers do so much for our children. They are role models. They spend 40 hours a week with them buying school supplies for our children. The students, uh, Guess and our guest joining us right now for final thoughts. And, and Pat, the question is, is there a breaking point for, for teachers in terms of their ability to buy the necessities for the classroom and their ability to pay for it on their own? Well, I think if you make $44,000 a year and you have to pay rent in Sarasota, there certainly is a breaking point. Do, will they continue to do it? Yeah, they'll always do it. They're never going to stop doing that. You may find you don't have very many teachers anymore, which is what I'm seeing. It's harder and harder to fill the slots. But I think they'll always do it, no matter what. They did it in the run room schoolhouse, and they're going to do it now, too. If there's a need, they're going to try to do the best they can. They might ask parents. They might ask Ms. Brown on the school board to help, but they're going to help somewhere. Shirley, what is the conversation among members of the school board about this issue? Because, I mean, obviously, you know, everybody knows about it. Well, school supplies isn't so much, you know, we're, we're, we're talking about um, you know, a, a, a charter school that got a D. How are we going to turn that around? Um, and, you know, and I don't know if, in fact, there's that much more that the school district should be, because m maybe we ought to be providing crayons for all classrooms. But I know, too, that there was a time when we kind of do that, and at the end of the year, there'd be all these supplies left over you know, that sometimes would get thrown out. And I'm like, wait a minute, you don't want that either. I don't think we're anywhere near that now. And, and I do think that we do need some of that personal responsibility the, the, and let those kids have that joy of picking out their stuff every year. Um, we just have to find the balance and we need to be able to reach out to those Title I schools to make sure that they have what they need. And you know what? It isn't an issue just the first day of school. When they come back from, from the, the break at Christmas, when all the crayons are broken and when they need new stuff and replacements, um, you know, I think that's some of the things that, you know, a lot of the people in community can do. We need their time. That's what teachers would like. Teachers would like a volunteer to come in and help get some of those things together, especially in the elementary school. So, Pat, finally, what would teachers want to see happen? Well, I, I think for people that are out there and are saying, gee, what could I do? And, and I saw this during 2008-9 when kids weren't even eating at home and people were out of work. Um, I carried in cases just in my neighborhood alone. I put something out in my neighborhood and I was getting cases dropped off on my front porch of food. And I think if anybody's out there, go to your local school and say, you need supplies? High school, do you need food in the pantry? Do you need backpacks? What do you need in this school? And then maybe go in your neighborhood and collect it and see what you can do. But, but keep going because it just doesn't end in October. Okay, we'll have to leave it there. Uh, the violent weekend in Charlottesville, Virginia, started with a white supremacist rally. In times of crisis, the American people look to their president for answers. President Trump addressed the nation on Saturday but failed to call out white supremacists by name. He did yesterday, but many thought that was 48 hours too late. He did it again today and threw gasoline on the fire by saying there were fine people in Charlottesville on both sides. So what do you have to say? Barry starts our comments off by saying, totally ridiculous, all this hate in America against our great president. John adds, he should be just as vocal about the hate groups, whether white or black, or uh, as he was about Islamic terrorists. Michael says he dropped the ball by not condemning the alt-right neo-Nazis and KKK. He showed the people who he really is. He showed us all exactly who Donald Trump is. And from Louisa, everything should have stayed segregated like that. Nobody gets in each other's way. Really, Louisa? Really? Well, if you'd like to join the conversation about tonight's topic, just visit our Facebook page at facebook.com slash news at 7. And FYI, you can watch past discussions. They're on demand. They're available on Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and Roku.
Thanks to our guests for being here tonight. Sarasota School Board member Shirley Brown and Pat Gardner, the president of the Sarasota Teachers Association. When we return, we will be joined by Jerry Zivic to discuss prescription drug costs. Plus, President Trump held a press conference this afternoon to discuss infrastructure, but the media had questions about Charlottesville. Well, I'll tell you what his response was when we got back. I heard about the Detoli Cancer Center through friends of mine who had been treated here and were very pleased with the treatment. If there is prostate cancer, we at the Detoli Cancer Center will find it using 3D color flow Doppler ultrasound. And that helped precisely identify where my cancer was and some additional cancers that were not found during the biopsy. I would recommend the Detoli Cancer Center. As a group of human beings, they are unbelievably great. If you're only hungry for a slice of apple pie, why buy the whole pie? And you certainly wouldn't want to pay for an all-you-can-eat buffet. So if you don't use your cell phone that much, why get charged for a plan that's too big or even an unlimited plan? Luckily, there's still a wireless company that shares your values. Welcome to Consumer Cellular. Our average customer pays about $25 a month for everything they need. Many pay even less as plans start at just $10 a month. You'll get a straightforward bill that's easy to understand with no surprises and all the attention you deserve from our friendly customer service team. No wonder Consumer Cellular has received JD Power Awards for highest customer service. Plus, if you're an AARP member, you'll receive special discounts. It's easy to switch. You can even keep your phone and your number. So stop paying for more than you need and start your 30-day risk-free trial today. Call 800-457-2317, go online, or visit a Target store today. It's Lincoln's summer sales event here at Alex Karras Lincoln. Drive a brand new 2017 Lincoln MKX Sport Utility for $349 per month or Lincoln's flagship, the 2017 Continental, for $449 per month. We have a great selection of certified pre-owned Lincolns. These vehicles have warranties up to 100,000 miles and come with complimentary roadside assistance. Alex Karras Lincoln, affordable luxury, winner of the prestigious 2015 President's Award, serving Florida's Sun Coast since 1978. We're located two miles north of the Sarasota Bradenton Airport on US-41. Your primetime headlines are coming up in a moment, but first we are joined by Jerry Zivic, our own ABC7 consumer watchdog, to discuss prescription drug costs in our For Your Benefit segment. And Jerry, I'm going to throw you a little curveball because we were just talking about baseball. Okay. Uh, the president has had kind of a rough day today, uh, and a number of CEOs are resigning from his manufacturing commission, including the CEO of Merck. So the president was very quick on the Twitter uh, to say, well, maybe he could go uh, work on uh, rip-off drug prices. So we're going to talk about drug uh, prices today, which a lot of uh, folks, especially around here, have uh, difficulty keeping up with. Uh, when this issue comes up, what is the first thing that you think of in terms of people's ability to try to get a break in terms of their pres pres prescription drug costs? Well, I, I think probably the easiest place to go if you're in a hurry and you want to do some one-stop shopping, I would recommend going to the Attorney General of the State of Florida. They have a website that has just an incredible number of resources. They have links to the drug companies that help you get rebates. They have links to groups that can tell you where to go. It's just a great resource, and you, don't, you can just go to their page and just click from there. Uh, of course, many doctors uh, and when, will give you a discount card uh, for a particular drug, but that doesn't always work. No, there, there, are, there are so many loopholes and hoops that you have to jump through that you really don't know what to do. And actually what's happening, we've been taught for so long that generics are the le least expensive way to go. Well now, Big Pharma and, and drug managers have been working with each other and they're cutting deals where a brand name drug can actually be cheaper than a generic drug. So when you get a prescription, you should go home and check to find out if the generic or the brand name would be less expensive. It's not necessarily the case that the, that the generic is the cheapest for you. You know, the, the big, big pharma has become almost a boogeyman uh, of sorts. Uh, the president uh, tweeted about it uh, yesterday. Uh, it obviously, it was a, a big issue with Bernie Sanders. Um, but do you see any effort out there really to take on the issue of prescription drug costs? No. And, and it's only gotten worse. Last year in 2016, Big Pharma, or the drug companies, the 28 largest drug companies, increased their revenue by almost $9 billion. That's a 100% increase in net revenue for the year. 
You know, a couple of years ago, and I know this is still the case today, um, you know, a lot of people talk about going to Canada uh, because they have lower uh, you know, drug costs there and prices there. Uh, is that still a popular mechanism for people to try to keep their, their costs under control? Well, people are going all over. They, they go to Canada, they go to Australia. If you go to a website, a pharmacy on a website, you don't really know where they're getting their medicines from. And that's all well and good, but at the end of the day, for better or for worse, the United States has more rules and regulations on drugs than any other country in the world. And, and one more question here, because some of the most expensive medications are for cancer. Uh, and if you are a cancer patient and you're watching this right now, you know, what can you do? Actually, I would contact the National Institute of Health. They have a whole host of resources for cancer patients. And, and is, is there help out there to defray some of these costs, what insurance doesn't pick up? There, the, a lot of the help is based upon need. And you have a lot of viewers that, that have need, and you have a lot of viewers of modest need as well. And there's a website called needymeds.org that actually can help you offset the cost of drugs or direct you where to go if, if you're of modest needs. And there's also a, a website that's, if you'll Google in modest needs, there's a collection of resources there too. All right, Jerry, thank you very much. Jerry Zivik joins us every other Tuesday in our For Your Benefit segment. Stay tuned, our primetime headlines are next. So you've decided to go to college. That's cool. So pop quiz, which is a better way to earn your degree? Commute to college and fill your gas tank, get stuck in traffic, drive in bad weather, try to find a parking space, walk a half mile to class, or learn online at Independence University. You don't go to college, college goes to you. That's Independence. That's Independence University. And all your supplies, including a brand new laptop and tablet, are included with tuition. Independence U for an independent you. Call 1 800 671 4817. When I was growing up, my mom told us, always treat others the way you want to be treated. She did business with companies that shared her values, like Mutual of Omaha. She had a guaranteed whole life insurance policy through United of Omaha Life Insurance Company, a Mutual of Omaha company. When my mother passed away, her United of Omaha policy helped cover her fuel expenses and bills, and they had money on its way to us within 24 hours. United of Omaha is here to take care of you. When you call the number on your screen, we'll help find the right policy for you. If you're between 45 and 85, you can get coverage up to $25,000 with no medical exam. Call us right now at the number on your screen. Now I know I'll be taking care of my family even after I'm gone. United of Omaha guaranteed whole life insurance. Call or go online now. Be there for their future. This is an important announcement. If you're between 50 and 85 and worried about your loved ones, you can still get affordable life insurance for peace of mind. My life insurance coverage is guaranteed, and I was not required to get a medical exam. I had high blood pressure and diabetes, and I got my coverage with one telephone call. No exam necessary. I'm a smoker, and I wanted to take care of my family. I called to get my life insurance and my affairs in order. I wanted to do the right thing. Call Final Expense No Exam Insurance. Your rates are guaranteed and will never increase. I called and learned that this insurance cannot be canceled, even if you get sick or gain weight. And there are no restrictions on how my beneficiaries use the money when I'm gone. Approval was easy, and the price was right. I wanted to do this for my children. Call 800-738-9812. 800-738-9812. Checking our primetime headlines, yesterday President Trump finally denounced neo-Nazis and Ku Klux Klan after last weekend's violence and deaths of a young woman and two state police officers in Charlottesville. Today, a much different sentiment from the president. ABC's Maggie Rooley reports. You can say what you want, but that's the way it is. President Trump squares off with reporters in Trump Tower, defending his response to this weekend's hate-fueled violence in Charlottesville that left one protester dead. You can call it terrorism. You can call it murder. You can call it whatever you want. And saying there are two sides to every story. I think there's blame on both sides, and I have no doubt about it, and you don't have any doubt about it either. The heated exchange, just the latest in an unwelcome first homecoming to New York City for President Trump. No KKK, no fascist USA! 
as protests and outrage over his initial response to this weekend's hate-fueled violence in Charlottesville follow him to Trump Tower. 48 hours after a woman lost her life protesting against a white nationalist rally, President Trump denounced the hate groups involved. Racism is evil, and those who cause violence in its name are criminals and thugs, including the KKK, neo-Nazis, white supremacists, and other hate groups. I think it's too little, too late, and I don't think it's genuine. Well-known white nationalist Richard Spencer seems to dismiss Trump's comments. Does anyone really believe that? He was saying vague statements that don't have a lot of meaning, to be honest. Spencer and other white nationalists have credited Trump's anti-immigration America First policies with their rise into the mainstream. We are determined to take our country back. We're going to fulfill the promises of Donald Trump. And the protests are set to continue with thousands of people expected outside Trump Tower here in New York City later today. Maggie Ruley, ABC News, New York. A public memorial service for the woman killed in the Charlottesville, Virginia car attack is set for Wednesday. Services to honor Heather Heyer will be held at the Paramount Theater in the city. Heyer was 32 years old and she was killed when the car plowed into the crowd of counter protesters at the white nationalist rally. Heyer's father, Mark, has a message for the suspected driver who hit and killed his, her daughter. I don't hold any ill will toward this young fella that did this. He's stupid, okay? He's only 20 years old. He don't have sense enough to make a lifelong decision about nothing. You know, I forgive him. Flat out, just I forgive him. The suspected driver, James Alec Fields Jr., is facing second-degree murder and other charges. Fields has had his first hearing on Monday and is due back in court next week. No bond was set, and he remains in custody. This has got to get under the skin of President Trump. Former President Obama's tweet regarding the violence in Charlottesville is one the most popular tweets in Twitter history. Obama tweeted a quote from Nelson Mandela that said, no one is born hating another person because of the color of his skin or the background or his religion. People must learn to hate, and if they can learn to hate, they can be taught to love, for love comes more naturally to the human heart than its opposite. The tweet has been liked by more than two and a half million times. That's all the time we have for this evening. I'm Alan Cohn. Thanks for joining us. Have a great weekend.